Our last power rule in section 5.1a is the power rule for a quotient. So this one says, if you have two real numbers being divided by each other, because that's what a quotient is, that are raised to a power, just like the power distributed onto each of the factors in our product, it's going to distribute onto both the divisor and the, and the dividend in our fraction here. So that's equal to a to the n over b to the n. So looking at a couple applications of this, if we apply the squared to the x and the 6, we end up with x squared over 36. And here, where both of our terms are variables, whoops, don't need the parenthesis, we're just going to get u to the 7th over v to the 7th. Section 5.1b starts to talk about how we can combine these rules together. So the things I want you to keep in mind when you're doing these is that we still follow order of operations. So you did see that just a little bit in problem 12. So the way to think of these as they apply is that if there are parentheses, Simplify inside if you can. Anything that's inside the parentheses. So we're not talking about distributing something that's outside. But if there's anything inside the parentheses that can get simpler, do that first. Okay. And then exponents would be applying our power rule. And then the MD is applying the product rule. So let's look at a couple of examples. With 4f and 2f, there isn't really anything that I can do to make things inside those parentheses simpler. So I'm going to go to the power rule, taking 4 and squaring it, and f and squaring it, and then 2 and cubing it, so that becomes an 8 and f cubed then the associative property says it's okay if I group these differently. I can change this into 16 times 8 times f squared times f cubed. When I multiply the 16 and 8 together, I get 128. And the f squared times f cubed, remember that's our product rule. We're going to add the 2 and the 3, not multiply them. So that becomes 128f to the fifth power. Looking at this next one, looks very similar to the one we just tried. 2x cubed is going to give me 8x cubed, and 2x squared is 4x squared. Once again, I regrouped, put my numbers and my variables near one another and I'm left with 32x to the fifth. In this last example, I have 2x times the quantity 4x squared t to the fourth, all raised to the second power. So there's nothing that I can simplify inside my parentheses, so I go to the power rule. I'm going to leave the 2x as it is here for the minute. Square the 4 square the x squared, and square the t to the fourth. So just remember, this becomes 2 times 2 and 2 times 4, since we're distributing a power over a power. Now I'm going to multiply through by the 2x. So 2 times 16 gives me 32. This x is really an x to the 1. So when it, since it's being multiplied by x to the 4, we're going to add those two exponents together, giving us x to the 5th. And then our t to the 8th is still a t to the 8th.
let's look at a couple more examples of s combining these different rules of exponents. In number 18, we've got a 2 to distribute over each of the, the factors inside our parentheses here. So this will become 16 a to the 4, b to the 6, and all of that's being multiplied by negative 3. So a negative 3 times 16 gives us a negative 48, a to the 4, b to the 6. Here we've got a combination of the power rule as it goes over a quotient. But remember this first step where we said that you can simplify inside parentheses if possible? Look at this fraction that we have right here, this 3 sixths. So I'm actually going to reduce within my parentheses first, making the 6 into a 2 and the 3 into a 1. So if I rewrite this, I now have d squared over 2 to raise to the third power little easier than having to cube 6. So when that distributes inside, I'm going to end up with d to the 2 times 3, which is 6, over 2 to the third power, which is 8. Our final example on this page has us doing some distributing first, because we do need to do exponents before we can do division since this division is not contained within one large set of parentheses. So I'm going to distribute the 2 inside the parentheses first, giving me 144 y to the 6 over 64, because 4 times 4 is 16, times another 4 gives me 64, z to the 30th. Now I'm going to reduce just the fraction portion of this problem. And since I can divide both the top and bottom by, it looks like by 16 here, when I divide the top by 16, I get 9. And when I divide the bottom by 16, I get 4. And then the exponent, the uh, variable parts, of my equation will stay the same.